now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to move on to our next topic, which is marketing health in India's new consumer-driven world. Firstly, we hope you are having a great time today at our wonderful event. Uh, it is time now to talk about the topic marketing health in India's new consumer-driven world. The growing econ economic prosperity largely spends on the health sector by the central and the state governments. Availability of digital technologies and data bolstered by the wave of coming on uh, age millennials taking a self-actualized approach to healthcare are all influencing a dynamic shift in the way brands need to approach their audiences. No longer is simply guiding a buyer through the sales funnel and intermittently managing the relationship acceptable. Consumers now have to have the control, the awareness and the tools to influence their own decisions more than ever before. In today's marketing landscape, it is indeed essential for brands to provide their consumers with memorable experiences that inform, delight and foster an emotional connection, especially within an industry as emotionally driven as healthcare. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you our esteemed speakers on this panel. First up, Ms. Smita Murarka, CMO Duroflex. Thank you so much, Smita, for joining us today. Thank you, Barna. We do have Ms. Suman Varma, CMO uh, Hamdard, who's joining us. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Varma, for joining us today. We also Hi, thank you. Pleasure having you here, ma'am. We also have uh, Ms. Darshana Shah, Senior VP Marketing, Aditya Billa Health Insurance. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Hi, thank you, Varna. Hi, everybody. Pleasure having you, ma'am. We also have Ms. Nikki Gupta, co-founder of Teamwork Communications Group. Thank you so much, Ms. Gupta, for joining us today. Thanks, Bhavna. Thank you. Nice to be here. Pleasure. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing you to the session chair, uh, Ms. Uh, Tasmai Laha Roy, editor, E4M. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Ms. Roy. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you for the introductions. Pleasure. So, ladies and gentlemen, with such uh, eminent uh, personalities on your stage and screen, it is now time to give in the live waiting to Ms. Roy to take it forth with her eminent panel. Over to you. Welcome speakers. Uh, so nice to have uh, such an esteemed panel uh, together uh, at our meet today. So, you know, we uh, try to utilize the most of the time and give you speakers the maximum time to speak. So, you know, quickly coming to the first question, uh, which we uh, thought of understanding from you guys is, you know, the last year, if there is one thing that people have started taking seriously and people have started uh, to take uh, care of, and that's health, right? So that has been the uh, central point of everything in the last one year. So, you know, in a circumstance like that, when people are already talking about health, when there is already so much awareness around health, does that make uh, marketing easier for you guys? Or, you know, does that increase the focus on marketing and does that make you re-strategize, make it more robust? And, you know, how does that change the dynamics of the whole uh, situation since my health was the uh, main uh, primary focus area uh, last year? So we can start with you, uh, Smita. Great. Uh, thanks, Tasmay, and thanks, um, Exchange for Media, for doing this and giving this whole focus to health. Uh, coming to your question, um, brands like ours, which are actually catering to consumers through products. So we are in the business of uh, sleep solutions, and our main product currently is mattresses. Right. I think uh, COVID aside and the negativity of COVID aside, this was really the awareness that we were waiting for for decades. Absolutely. Right, because uh, we propagate a lot about the importance of sleep and health. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, in this country, this was really ignored. I mean, uh, this was thought to be as something we just uh, try to do and catch up four or five hours. And uh, we should be proud if we have not slept properly. That was really uh, the culture that we are brought up on. Yeah. So it, it was really difficult for us to talk a lot about sleep. And we genuinely believe in sleep, uh, talking right. about sleep versus just selling. So for us, of course, when business was uh, really active pre-COVID, uh, it was also a choice of weightages to give on pure product uh, communication right. versus talking about sleep, which is anyway not you know heard by consumers. So for us, honestly, this has become easier 
because uh, consumers are now understanding that what are the few things which are very critical to health and this year a lot of editorial media has also talked about sleep and the importance of it uh, so the facts have really put things in uh, favor of brands like ours which were not so much uh, healthcare brands but um, you know cater to some element of uh, health so for us um, it, it's it's been great because um, i think as a nation we've started taking our health more seriously overall and i hope this continues post covid too and we don't go back to uh, you know abusing our uh, mental and uh, physical well being uh, so i think a lot of good things also we should take out of this uh, wave that uh, we've experienced and uh, hope a lot of behaviors uh, really stay so for us i think it's been uh, quite good right right uh, over to uh, you suman what do you think at hamdard you know has has your marketing strategies changed drastically over the year or in the last one year and half or has it been the same what's changed for you in uh, terms of marketing in the last year and a half i think uh, the last one and a half years has been such a brilliant roller coaster ride for everybody i think it's changed us all it's changed companies it has changed the way you look at sales marketing supply chain whatever every department of it and i think uh, just like the last uh, lockdown took us all by surprise Mm -hmm. i think you know it just meant a lot of re-strategizing in the sense that we tried to do things that we'd never done before and as you know hamdard is a very traditional 100 year old company it's followed very uh, strict normal atl kind of things mm -hmm. so this was a time that it really required that you wear a new hat and uh, get on to it so of course this whole digital uh, penetration that sort of boomed on us Uh, was a great way to look at reworking and reframing and repositioning all our brands i think that's what we did and uh, while uh, you know the sentiment was the outside sentiment was not such that you could come with song and dance and do a lot of uh, mm. you know hype around that yet we wanted our brand presence to happen and uh, we dared to do things which were different which i dare say that had the pandemic not happened we would never have done things like that for our brand mm -hmm. so yes we did come up with a lot of uh, digital campaigns to keep our brand presence alive mm -hmm. and uh, of course we looked at uh, doing a bit of insight mining because while everybody is locked in who's the one who's most pressured it's Absolutely. the mother right so there were communications uh, that centered around her and we positioned our products and brands around that so we did some music video we had a sunidhi chauhan singing a song for us but you know it was very well received because it at the heart of it the brand proposition of health and wellness never went out of focus right so we right. did things like that uh, i i think very early in the times of our uh, of the lockdown last year uh, it just it sort of you know we were just sort of thinking what is it that one needs to do and who is it that who's not scared of this pandemic that's right and you know as a by the by the conversation happened what about the bodybuilders and what about really the rough and tough people are they scared of this and one thing led to another and that's when we signed up with you know babita forgot and uh, her sister and we did a communication which says matter poko basically driving home a point that it is wiser to be a dirt poke and stay home rather than go out and mm. you know lose it all but we sort of played up with our own uh, products which was mm -hmm. our immunity builders because as you know hamdard is well known for its uh, mm. immunity and respiratory products and who would have thought you know that here was an opportunity to get a captive audience and talk about our range of products and i think we were well received at that stage as well so uh, yes while the whole world was talking about digital and digital transformation and i call it the digital revolution that was happening i right. think hamdard must have been one of the last uh, companies to have got onto the digital uh, bandwagon and that's right. what we did last year we got onto e-commerce online health consultancies we did our uh, salience uh, brand presence through digital and you know it did give us a lot of great results and uh, the best thing that happened was that it was a great discovery to know that you know the the normal 
pattern of uh, discovery, engaging mm -hmm. and buying pattern has changed. And that's a right. great thing to know because uh, the young people have shown it to us. The millennials perhaps have really shown us that you have to keep it fluid. There are moments, there are micro moments and all of this could be utilized in a different way. So yes, I think overall uh, we did think different. I personally, because I've been associated with Hamdard uh, from the agency perspective for 15 years and then now I'm sitting on this side of the table I can tell you there are a lot of things that I now do I wouldn't have dared to even come and propose it to the people right. because you know you would think you know, somebody's just lost it to be uh, proposing mm -hmm. an idea like that so yeah Absolutely. we're managing to do good things out here great, so, great. right yeah. So that, that's so many interesting insights, you know, doing something for the first time uh, in the last yeah. uh, year. So uh, we've come to you, uh, Darshana, if you can uh, tell us a little bit, uh, walk us through uh, what changed for you guys, because insurance was something, you know, e people who haven't heard of it, people who haven't ever, you know, uh, gone online and searched what kind of insurance they need, what is the kind of insurance that suits their budgets, their requirements. You know, every one of them must have checked out one plan or the other in the last year and a uh, half, if I may say so. So, you know, how has that changed marketing for you guys? I'm sure there was pressure on product, on new customer acquisition. There must have been so much going on. So tell us a little bit about uh, what changed in your marketing strategies in the last uh, year and a half. Yeah, so that's, that's my yes, thanks. It was a clearly unprecedented life for everybody. Yes. And... Um, the good thing, I think, for once, I really felt excited to be a marketeer in a health insurance category because right. for once, the customers were waking up that I have, do I have a health yes. insurance? I used to always say that, you know, health insurance, nobody is going to wake up and say, Kya, yaar, mere paas, aaj I want to go and buy clothes, I want to buy many things. Health insurance is not even top of the mind. So for once, this category suddenly became a pull category and not a push category. So, yes. And uh, yes, everything changed for us the way even Suman was saying and uh, others were saying. So in last year, March, when pandemic really hit, is a, Jan 5 March is very, very big for us in insurance and sales. And this is exactly the time. March is the largest month in the year. And suddenly, we had to completely go on a halt. Absolutely. So it was, uh, and, uh, insurance is sold a lot through intermediaries. So, so imagine you can't meet customers face to face, they stop, they stop everything. So it was completely uh, devastating at that time. The, you know, enter India, everything came to a halt. And more than that, there was a lot of anxiety with uh, customers. There was a lot of panic. So the good thing, what has helped us is that we had launched this company with a positioning of health first. We were not about health insurance. We were about health first and focus on your health. So that entire proposition that we have built in the last four years is what really helped us because this was a time when people were not looking at sales. They were not looking at any brands coming and pushing them on buying products, but really empathizing and helping that. And that's when we started this entire, so we have a, I have a huge community online called Active Living. And my entire Health From Home series is what we started. We partnered with a lot of influencers, uh, big names like Liu Coutinho, Aditi Govitrikar, Nikki Mehta, and many such things. A lot of doctors and every day we used to have Facebook Live series from morning to night on physical fitness, nutritional wellness. We also had uh, around uh, the doctors coming and talking mental wellness. So all those wellness, whether it is physical, nutritional, mental, and also doctors coming and talking with the uh, pregnant women, senior citizens. So this entire thing we ran for six complete months, a lot of engagement from health from home. We also created an entire uh, you know, conversation around the new health partners because people were used to having their health buddies and go out for a run, walk, mm -hmm. you know, somebody nudging you. And that's what India is all about, the whole community way and you know, with your health buddies. And suddenly that had stopped. So we created an entire series called Sehat Ki Nahi Adat right. in Under Health From Home where you had to look at your mother-in-law or your husband or you know, the mother and child. How can you create new health buddies in the house, at your home and do things together and still not give up? This gave us a lot of, uh, you know, this gave us a lot of customers coming, engaging with us from the health lens, not just for health right. insurance. So that really helped our positioning. Mm -hmm. That helped my, uh, you know, entire intermediate, my bank because we sell a lot through banks. We sell a lot through, you know, the agents and entire ABG group being a large conglomerate. Yes. So, so many of ABG companies and also we could create this kind of a platform conversation and engagement through. I think we reached almost 70 million customers in this entire 
uh, you know time we in that six months of lockdown we have a part of the facebook hall of fame so a lot of new ways of doing things a lot of agile uh, i also have a mobile app for all these activities so you could do suddenly we had to introduce all virtual home videos to live active because we also give money back if you are staying active so that's our right. proposition so creating everything literally up you know differently looking at from the Analysis. consumer lens being more empathizing with the customers was the way we went around doing this and it really helped because we were finally as a brand still growing at 70% year on year Absolutely. so that's a kind of uh, yes wow. and health has been the focus no doubt right 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 so uh, you know uh, uh, nikki over to you you know uh, while all the other speakers spoke about their brands and you know what they have been uh, doing in the last year and half i'm sure for you you know you have worked with multiple brands together uh, so multiple clients uh, tell us what was that one common thing you know that they were looking to change in their marketing strategies in the uh, last year and half or what are the kind of solutions that they were asking you for to you know bring about that whole change in conversation bring back the whole focus of the marketing to help uh, acclimatizing people about the importance of uh, their products services etc tell us a little bit about how it has been in the last year and half uh certainly um tamshi so um i tell you uh, as you said that health is a universal crisis right now and everybody is facing yeah. the same situations being that in mind we are a health focused communication firm and we work for more than 45 clients in healthcare wow so when we are talking about healthcare communication and um you know 45 cl client having clients in our kitty i would say that it has been a very roller coaster ride for us Sure. every client wants a very custom made tailor made communication plan and the plan is no more like even the monthly plans are not even working in the healthcare scenario right now because things are changing so frequently that you cannot rely on the long term plans here so either our teams are working you know around the clock mm -hmm. and they are making short term plans like for 15 days for 7 days according to the client's requirement if i talk about in this last one and a half year we have done multiple healthcare award winning campaigns we we have done uh, for hero cycle cycle revolution we have talked about where we did not just talk about cycling but yes it is the whole you know health related campaign it was not just the focus on cycling but yes it was related to the health we are working for apollo telehealth so how the telehealth is because of this pandemic people are not going for physical uh you know consultation That's everybody right. is opting for online consultation so we That's created uh, you know more than uh, 7 lakhs um, online consultation in a specific period and we really did great campaigning and then with influencer marketing with novartis we did you know disease awareness campaign so it was a holistic approach for all the brands that we are taking and be it a oxygen crisis so the team is very agile we need to the industry's whole agile so we really need to work accordingly and create the customized plan for all the brands right right great uh, so you know another interesting thing that comes up from each what each one of you said like uh, suman mentioned a couple of things that were digital first uh, initiatives that were taken last year darshana mentioned so many uh, interesting things that happened online last year so you know there is a uh, one uh, common thing that happen across board for all marketers irrespective of their sectors uh, that you know um, content became a very important part of marketing right even brands that were never present online came online to you know kind of carry on a certain piece of communication which was done through interesting content which was either to grab the attention of the people because a lot of people were going online either on their smartphones TVs other devices so content became a very huge and important part of the communications that brands sent out so uh, suman will uh, start with you again if you can uh, you mentioned a couple of things in your first answer but if you can elaborate a little bit about you know the um, importance that you gave uh, to content as a marketer and how it changed things for you um you know my biggest uh, issue in hand has been that all our brands are 70 plus years old and uh, 
you know, a lot of people would turn around and say, oh my God, but it's so traditional. Now, it doesn't help to be so traditional when you're in a health and wellness brand. You have to look at the efficacy of the product rather than just the imagery around it. But yes, of course, uh, uh, you know, you have to be talking the youth language. You have to be uh, talking to people who influence decision making. And uh, we all know it that when you have a 14 plus at home, they sort of start influencing you to think different, look different, behave different. Now, um, it definitely meant one thing that uh, we weren't going to just stick to traditional media because traditional media till September last year, I don't even think most brands were present on television as such. So uh, while we were enjoying the little fame that we had got from the digital world, we decided that we would uh, dial down the age of the brand by uh, taking on what really sort of resonates with the consumers today and our consumers being that 18 to 21 that we wanted to talk. And if I specifically look at a brand like Safi, which is all about Mm -hmm. anti-acne, and that's the age that you really want to be talking to. So it definitely made sense that you get onto content as well, because uh, when we made our digital films, they're very different. They're very unlike uh, who are I got acne. None of those stories are there. There's no brand window that you talk about uh, blood purification. So we really took on to a little higher level and we brought in, uh, you know, let's say mini celebrities in the sense that people who are super achievers from different walks of life. And we use them as, uh, you know, the core uh, narrative uh, people. Uh, Then we went on to Brute platform. So, you know, Brute, as we all know, has its own engaging way of talking. So we came up with three of our films on Safi uh, as a content. And I think it really, really sort of was so well received. And what is interesting, I think what's amazing is that today radio comes up with content. Today you have digital platforms of other publications who give you great content. And of course, uh, you know, you can't be so far removed if you don't get onto today's uh, bandwagon and have influencer marketing. So we looked at all of that, whether they were in Instagram, whether it was in uh, LBB platform, which launches new products and stuff. So I really think that even if I may say so, for me, um, it was a great learning experience as, uh, you know, as a marketing person trying to look at how much more new things that I can come up with, which is going to engage with the clients, uh, I mean, with the consumers in a way which is, you know, the content has to be sticky for the brand to stay in your mind, right? So it had to be relevant. It had to be uh, completely in sync and I wanted it to be talked about. So there was an element of virality that sort of came with it. So yeah, I think uh, it did great things for us. So content now is definitely something that we specifically focus on building as we go uh, into the, you know, out of the second wave, preempting the third wave (laughs) and then trying to strategize and say, what more? Right. Absolutely. Uh, Smita, I would uh, want to understand the same thing from you as well. You know, any content around sleep sounds like an amazing idea to me. But I'm sure uh, as a brand, uh, you must have also had uh, a content plan because everybody's talking about content these days. So what is it that you uh, did around that? If at all you did something uh, around content in this time? So we did a lot around content that was uh, really pivotal for us. That was the differentiating factor uh, among mm-hmm. everybody else uh, in this category and our peers. As mm-hmm. um, so before COVID, as I was telling you, uh, yeah. as we were very passionate about sleep, which mm-hmm. is on the product offering that we're giving. Uh, unlike, um, you know, maybe Hamdad, which the product itself is very directly held. Then yes. This, of course, was more about first educating on sleep. Yes. And then the products and of mattresses and what right. so uh, we we make um, uh, premium mattresses we make um, doctor recommended mattress mm. in in a country where mattress itself most of the purchase is unbranded right so you can imagine mm. it was a very very indirect conversation pre-covid 
but once uh, covid struck we were ready we were ready with a lot of content because um, as a team we had been reading books we were passionate about sleep so we were ready with that and uh, last year the first wave when it hit and there was complete lockdown as a management as as teams we didn't think twice but we went all out and uh, we released a campaign on sleep for immunity uh, so it was there on tv it was there on digital we also got uh, very active on uh, social media and digital uh, we did things um, you know which uh, no other brand in our category has done before uh, you know so we used a lot of influencers to talk about fitness health how you should build a sleep routine um, you know so and and uh, last year uh, during the first wave there was a lot of stickiness on influencers and live videos right. because course. people were generally upbeat even though there was a lockdown and uh, they were ready to embrace new things right if you all remember there was a lot yes. of cooking that all of us did and uh, similarly fitness um, so a lot of people were quite upbeat and uh, it right. worked really brilliantly for us we uh, once business became normal we did not look back and we said content on sleep has to still stay uh, we really need to balance it out along with business content which is around product selling offers plus mm-hmm. we need to continue on sleep so sleep was all, all, always a equal kind of a conversation on our social media platforms um, so even uh, just before the second wave uh, we had one of the largest pro- uh, properties ip properties sounds of sleep which i don't know if you all have heard but it became quite viral organically it was the first time in the country that any brand like ours has done a property on music and it was about the regional lullabies um, Uh, really reviving them for the young parents um, reducing their anxiety and some of the top singers came together and it was hosted on sony uh, youtube channel as well as ours so this was wow. completely different it was not in the realm of business but of course on the whole education of sleep uh, when the second wave struck this time the mood was much more somber right if you all recall yes. about two months back in april it was really a negative scenario where yes. uh, any yes. any brand which was seen to be promoting business or a product was really negative and right. uh, we didn't want to be doing that so what we had been conscious about in our content strategy is know the mood of the consumer right there right then so it's not about creating a plan on excel sheet uh, while we do all that but making sure that as a team we are very clued in on the moment of the mood and uh, we made sure that that time we just took a back seat we took off all our uh, product communication and for 15 days we got doctors on board in fact this time wow. so this time it was not so much about uh, you know talking about positivity because the word positive i think uh, had a negative meaning altogether yeah. so we shifted our strategy to more uh, really get the experts the qualified experts uh, which is doctors and uh, make them say how um, firstly uh, sleep impacts uh, even uh, vaccine efficacy so we had this um, whole um, you know article written by our md and some of the doctors in the big names so uh, how sleep impacts vaccine efficacy pre and post and that was a very relevant article when whole the entire vaccination uh, drive was uh, starting off right so very very uh, relevant conversations and bringing it the right experts at the right time uh, relying on the mood of the consumer and uh, balancing between uh, business right. kind of content product kind of content and actually what you stand for in a much larger objective that has really been our strategy uh, we've also because we've been so focused on what else can we launch to help people sleep better we've been able to um, you know expand our product offering and today we sell a lot of uh, pillows accessories mattress protector in fact last year we uh, launched a antiviral mattress protector something which normally might not have uh, taken so much of a center stage but uh, holistically i think uh, we were able to really uh, look from a consumer and healthcare uh, point of view we are also doing a lot of research on uh, sleep internally and we would be coming out with a lot more things um, so i think if you know what uh, really uh, part of health uh, is is it that you are focusing on as a business and you're very single minded about that from consumer point of view more than your that's business right. point of view i think that that makes great content because um, you know i mean otherwise you're just selling as suman said if if there's safi as a product it's still relevant today uh, similarly sleep is going to be relevant forever right so yes absolutely you're not talking to a particular kind of an audience or trying to sell them something to suit 
you know just an age group or a lifestyle it is That's essential right. Uh, so for healthcare uh, content, I would think uh, really be true and honest to what you're all about. Uh, if 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 you're totally out of the realm of healthcare marketing, then uh, just because the mood is around it, probably it doesn't make much sense to talk about it. But luckily for all of us on this panel, it is something that uh, we are strongly focused on. So content comes naturally. Absolutely, you know, it's so interesting, Smita. After having heard you about so much content that you. Did around sleep. I, I now feel that I deserve so much more sleep. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sure that's the kind of message we're trying to drive home through the content. You know that it's effective, and the consumer realize that you know this is the kind of product they need, or this is something that they've been missing out on. So I'll ask you, Darshana. You've already mentioned the interesting things about working with influencers, etc. You know, uh, uh, tell us that you know. Uh, Healthcare is something like all our other speakers are also mentioning that we don't know what kind of if it's a clothes that you're selling if it's something you know jazzy that you're selling you know that there's a certain kind of content that you're expecting from these products but healthcare is something we are not sure that you know what what is the kind of content that we would see you know that would have a stickiness factor to it that people would come back to it and also you know content around healthcare can also go viral like we have seen. Uh, Heard our other speakers talk about. So tell us a little bit. Uh, you know that how did you manage to keep these uh, content different yet uh, making sense for your product and your brand value, and also reaching out to the right uh, set of audience. Yeah, so see for us, first thing, let me talk about the category. This category has always been ca called as MediClaim and not health yeah. insurance. That's yes. how people still think, and that's actually nothing but the PSU product. So yeah. that was when we launched only by itself. That was a change we wanted to bring. That we wanted to focus on health insurance, and that also on health and health insurance. Right. So which is where we had always started our journey. It's just that last year, this year and a half, it's really amplified. So when you talk about, like I said, I already had started with a community, and it was very small, like two, two, two and a half years back. I only had sixty-four, sixty-five thousand customers coming in, and in the community, which we call active living, physical fitness. Nutritional fitness, mental fitness, and uh, lifestyle conditions, because these are the nuggets of if you have diabetes, if you and India is a world diabetes capital, so diabetes, if you have uh, asthma, hypertension, you know, blood pressure. So this is all that we also cover in our product. If you and if you're staying healthy, like I said, we give you 100% of your premium back in the wallet, and you can actually so you can literally make the product free. So with this kind of a promise that we are in the journey, health. And driving engagement because again, health insurance is a buy and forget category. You don't want to buy the product and obviously use it because you don't want to get hospitalized. Yes. So you are going to keep it in your locker and don't. So so everything changed last year. Last year suddenly a lot of COVID cases. People had a lot of anxiety. So this community where we had a lot of conversations around health and the content. To be honest, earlier we were focusing more on static posts and you know writing a blog kind of long form articles. Last year, suddenly we realized a lot of content need a lot of empathy with the consumer on the on, on and brand becoming a brand who's reaching out and you know understanding your need. So we bought all variety of content medium. So whether it was podcast, whether it was uh, music, whether it was videos, and obviously static and infographics. So literally on the platform, we created 200 plus content you know pieces. Literally writing it all new. So. Having so many content partners on the background, and that is what created. So last year, I had uh, you know a million plus visitors on this. This is not my health insurance. This is just a community sort of a you know a space microsite. So that's the kind of traffic we got today. We have around twenty thousand plus subscribers who are month on month coming, repeatedly using it. So that is what the drive driving content for that. Second thing is interest groups. So today, um, because I have you know like we have twelve million million lives covered. So we have an entire application, mobile app that you download. Again, I said it's a health and wellness ecosystem. We partnered with a uh, lot of all these telemedicines, doctor on call, all that which was on the medical side. Also on the health side, we have Fitbit, Garmin, we have Google Fit, Apple Health. So we can track the health. We can we can help you on any diagnosis or anything like that. So know your health, improve your health, and get rewarded is a platform that comes to life through our app, mobile application. And there also I have interest groups. I saw 300%. So we have. Running group, we have nutrition group. We are also adding a diabetes group. So I have seen 300% jump in conversation. People joining the groups and actively participating. So suddenly, just going out and selling a health insurance product the way this category does 
we've actually turned this entirely on its head and started from the health first conversation and that is why content has become a you know large piece for me the way we do things differently and i'll give you some of the examples like every year on world health day i do this property and this was my fourth year called jump for health that you jump for your health and we donate prosthetic leg to somebody who can walk this has almost become a movement i have global jumping groups across the globe people have created groups for us and they keep donating it to us and this year alone and this was completely driven digitally we also do through our bank partners and all so this year alone i have donated 1100 you know prosthetic leg so that's a kind of digital virality that it's created and similarly we do on cancer day and just just yoga day i think two weeks back we had world yoga day so this time we did yoga day differently we created yoga music also uh, we've done a lot of partnership with you see music was another thing during so creating a you know health music a health playlist so we partnered with spotify we did with gana so creating this kind of different kind of content which which is on the move on the go mm -hmm. the bite size you know uh, snackable content as you call it so these are the things that we did uh, last year and that's what has engaged a lot of our consumers that has got the you know the brand uh, scores going up so yeah i think that's what we've done and of course a lot of awards that won so great Uh, uh nikki i come to you and you know uh, help us understand i'm sure you have seen a variety of content right you have so many clients in your basket so i'm sure each one of uh, them have a different kind of uh, content depending on what they are selling right so tell us about the variety that you have seen you know from x kind of content to z kind of content you know what is the kind of variety that you see okay so i would like to start with this um, you know uh, the importance of content in healthcare so Absolutely. you know just a small thing when it comes to the healthcare healthcare is communication is a very serious business it's not like a lifestyle yes. because it is related to your life and death so yes. of course the whole um, you know uh, the focus goes on the quality of the content the importance the how trustworthy is your content right how informative is your content so these are the things that we really need to work uh, around when we are working on the content you cannot create any content like any launches simple the yeah. real difference you can make in during your com communication so it's important to be very authentic it is important to be show empathy during your con mm -hmm. uh, you know conversations and the con uh, communication so when it comes to the content we have seen the variety as i mentioned about beat you know the first when the first lockdown started nobody was aware about the what we are going to do to be very frank the brands were not aware everybody yeah. was just moving what media was talking about yeah that time uh, we are we realized and we just start working on the as we have more than 17 18 hospitals in our organizations so right. we work, started giving information and talking about more on the current news the hard news which media is looking right. for hmm. either it's uh, it's on the immunity everybody wanted to boost yes. their immunity that time yes. so yes, yes the immunity was the key that time at the same time hospital beds and how many number of patients are increasing and uh, you know how do you want to stay fit because during the first wave everything was normal means there yes. was not such kind of casualty where the people were not happy around and they just don't want to do very serious story so it was more over a informative uh, stories that we were doing that time and we were focusing more on the hospital aspects gene strings we work for which does uh, you know um, covid testings so be it a testing labs startups and multiple uh, you know when it comes to the second wave it was more over a very serious content and it was a ongoing thing because hospitals in between and the healthcare brands along with the covid they wanted to promote their other things as well so during our communication we need to ensure that we are focusing on the other areas as well be it cancer beat other diseases also right so we, we were focusing and taking the holistic approach and uh, you know publicizing and communicating with the media in a very mindful manner with the very trustworthy content and you can see the mushrooming of the healthcare brands when it comes to the immunity booster because everybody was running after immunity yes so, 
so be it social media content a pr content or the influencer marketing content one thing that we anchored it with the trust empathy and uh, right information because when right. you are giving a piece of wrong information you know it spreads like a fire a wildfire so keeping that in mind the being a uh, you know communication firm it was our responsibility to keep the focus uh, apt on the brands along with the right communication i would say absolutely absolutely you know there are so so many important uh, points that you uh, brought out nikki like important uh, importance of the communication and the right messaging that is also important you have to be sensitive about what you're talking about what is the communication that you're giving out so you know uh, given we have very little time left on this panel i would come to each one of you to understand uh, the importance of you know being sensitive uh, in your content yet being different from your competition when you are giving out a certain piece of uh, information or communication to your uh, customers and you know how differently have you done it for your brand you know what makes you cut through the clutter so we'll start with you again some uh, someone if you could wrap it up for us okay uh will i just speak about hamdard first because yes. that helps me to yes. talk about uh, what we could have done yes. i think uh, the desire of any marketing uh, person would be to create a content that would be clutter breaking or create any communication that's clutter breaking but you know the business that uh, we handle which is uh, health and wellness mm -hmm. the most clutter breaking thing out there is the product itself Absolutely. what is the product that's going to be uh, driving it or what are the services that as a health company that we are going to provide to people that's really going to uh, you know sort of uh, connect with the consumer that was of prime importance and i think even in the pandemic last year we launched 11 products and that itself wow. was a uh, quite a task because you know as uh, i think nikki spoke about that uh, everybody spoke about community and stuff like that but the point is that uh when you are uh, you know i think this pandemic gave uh, supported nature and natural products and it gave them a chance to sort of thrive and survive on and uh, it is therefore it was a very natural thing that uh, despite having 450 products in our own kitty right. we came up with a lot of other products which were the need of the hour you know whether it was the single ingredient products which uh, you don't need to be prescriptive in that you know you could just sort of buy it off the shelf and since we were already present in e-commerce and places like that it was so easy to purchase these products so the communication that went with it were i wouldn't say insightful but they were beautiful because you know when you start seeing the kind of ingredients that have gone into the making of that product it sort of starts talking to you right. so that's how uh, beautiful our communications looked you know in the hmm. digital space so uh, we did a lot of other things and also during the pandemic i think that ayush ministry supported and promoted a lot of uh, yes. natural products so hmm. i think this gave boost to a lot of uh, products who are in the yunani space and otherwise and yunani as a system is known to few and those who believe in it believe in it wholeheartedly yes but uh, i think what also this uh, whole thing you know the pandemic did to us was that it allowed us to outbox the brands and start indulging and having a conversation with people who are not the users of this product so right. uh, a lot of social listening really helped us to understand that what is it that people wanted to understand so you know i think in the past if the communication or whatever information dissemination had happened it seemed a bit layered it helped us to sort of demystify it and put out a very simple communication where putting the heart of the product as a as a story and uh, right. doing a lot of things so i used pr very extensively because you know during the pro uh, pandemic uh, four of our products went in for uh, research they wanted to understand whether it works to treat the you know the covid patients and we are awaiting results now so that also was a talking point so i think all in all uh, what it did i uh, what i think the pandemic has really helped us to understand and there's a great learning for it is that 
you know, one needs to simplify, demystify uh, the products, talk about the natural products in a more natural manner and help it to connect with not just a section of people who understand the, the method of uh, this holistic treatment, but sort of start disseminating that information to one and all. And, uh, you know, the surprising bit has been that the number of letters and queries that we get on a daily basis on products related to respiratory, skin, immunity, in, uh, I think has been quite awe-inspiring. And uh, this has also given us a lot of opportunity to create our online cons health consultancy, uh, you know, which is sort of, we started last June, but I think it's sort of taken off and we really need to have more doctors to be able to service them than to be able to service our clinics. So that I think has also been uh, quite a learning. And uh, I think like, um, I think Smitha was talking about that since most of my products are related to health and wellness, it sort of gives us that one advantage to reach out to people during this time, however trapped you may feel inside your homes, that here are these natural products. It's going to have a better effect on your lifestyle rather than, you know, popping a lot of other uh, kind of medicines which can have side effects because these have no side effects. So, yeah, I think that's a great learning in all of this. Right, right. Uh, Smita, I'll quickly come over to, you know, uh, picking up exactly from there, you did not have a product which is directly related to health. But again, it has a deep relevance in the whole system. So uh, in terms of your messaging, in terms of your marketing, what is it, uh, you know, that differentiated, you know, um, a communication to convince buyers alongside being sensitive at the same time, given the time that we are, uh, we were all in. So, you know, it, tell us about your key learnings and how you will do things differently from now on, or if things are changing for good for you, because we have all entered into a very weird phase and things are constantly changing. So yes, uh, uh, your wrapping up message, uh, Smitha. Yeah, I'd like to touch upon some fundamentals of yes. why uh, even more, I'm sure a lot of people have realized, businesses have realized it's a very yes. function still, uh, budget or no budget, uh, is that uh, content is, um, content and uh, the crux of it is what you do as a business, what you believe yes. in, what products you make, right? So you, in, and especially in the age of social media, which, um, you know, is, is very real, you can, you can really uh, separate the fake from, from right. the real story, you cannot faff anymore, unlike probably just a headline ad or, you know, just any other medium. So social media has made it more important that what you say has meaning and is consistent. Yes. So before uh, we can even have content marketing or really put out facts or figures over there, we should have done our homework. Um, as I said, we already had a doctor recommended product range, uh, yes. so mattresses, uh, one of our leading uh, mattress range, Duropedic, uh, was recommended uh, and certified by doctors. And this is something we did two, three years before when, um, you know, we didn't know something like this is going to come in mainstream and it's going to become so important. But it, it happened because we genuinely as a team believed that things products like this needs to come. We have a very strong innovation and research uh, team even in the product division. So it cannot happen overnight that COVID strikes and tomorrow you, you reorganize your uh, business to really focus on healthcare and products that impact it, right? You have to really uh, breathe it from all functions. So product-wise, we were already trying to make the most of uh, the knowledge that we had and upgrade it and um, you know, have ranges which are more meaningful uh, for consumers. On the other side, uh, as I said earlier, we had already equipped ourselves. Uh, we were very passionate and it flows from the top. So we were very fa passionate about sleep. And all of us, uh, you know, uh, wantingly wanted to learn more about sleep. So internally, we had learning sessions. We had a lot of things which pre-COVID and during COVID, it got strengthened, which help us all come out with nuances and facts about uh, sleep. Um, which finally gave us our content strategy, right? So some of these things, especially healthcare, especially serious topics uh, like this, you cannot just have a creative idea or uh, you can you know, just do some great content marketing, which is very viral and, and move on to something else. It needs to be genuine. It needs to be honest. It needs to be human. 
it needs to connect with the the other person who's listening to it so it's it's a lot more nuanced it's a lot more factual based of course you layer that with your creativity you layer that with your um, you know new uh, way of projecting it so sleep can be projected in multiple multiple ways that's what you bring to the table as a marketing team but other than that your whole business your company your product portfolio all need to talk the same language and and really be differentiated from the rest of the pack uh, for us luckily we were in a category which will which was literally sleeping on uh, content and uh, we were able to really um, you know get a lot more bang for our buck because of that so from an roi perspective or from a reach perspective it it, it uh, gave us a lot more versus established categories um, where everybody's talking the same uh, but of course now we are getting into a situation where uh, everybody's caught up to it so it will help us be on our toes even more but uh, yeah i mean uh, combined with a, a category that was not so actively talking about uh, the topic that we we should have uh, which is sleep collectively so much uh, it really gave us a strong edge but um, the the really the uh, bullseye need for good content is your business and your product portfolio being around it consistently so that's really the starting point right thank you so much speakers it was such an interesting session to hear all of you thank you so much for joining us thanks thank you thank you thank you for having me thank you thank you